48 hours from now, we'll be playing all that Season 1 Reloaded has to offer for Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2. But in the final stretch here before this update and the coming content for it, I want to take a second and lay out a handful of things you need to know in regards to Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2's second of two seasonal updates for Season 1 of the game. As we go along, drop your thoughts down below. Are you looking forward to what Season 1 Reloaded will have on offer? Anything in particular that really strikes you? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts below. But if you enjoyed the video, you find it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay today with all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and anything COD related ahead of the upcoming update. We'll have the update itself and quite a few guides, tutorials, and all that coming with the following content. So if you'd like to join the community, I'd love to have you. And finally, check out my friends at G Fuel for some great stocking stuff for gifts and get 20% off your order with code ESPRESSO. But for now, let's talk about a few things that you should know ahead of Modern Warfare 2's mid-season update. First, let's start simple, the update itself. This is going to be a genuine update. The last couple that we saw here, introducing new playlists and some minor fixes here to the game. Those have been playlist updates and hot fixes. This one is going to require an actual download, not just the game restart. Right now, it's not known, as of recording this at least, the sizing of the update, but if prior updates are any indication, should be a few gigs at least. Nothing too crazy or over the top that would introduce an entire new wing of the game like Warzone 2 and DMZ, but something more than a few gigabytes likely adding in a bit more content. Now, what is hopefully on the way as well, and we just won't know until what is likely tomorrow, is the ability to preload. The last few updates have been preloadable for Modern Warfare 2, so one would assume that we'll end up having that same ability with the mid-season update and especially the mid-season update, given that it's actually already logged with platform databases. Circling back, it's kind of surprising that we don't have a file size for it just yet, especially with PlayStation. Those normally log the sizing the moment they're cataloged in the PlayStation databases. But again, with this being something that PlayStation already has the build of the game, it's just a matter of rollout. So while we don't have it confirmed explicitly, preloading, if it does become a thing, will likely happen around 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern, and I believe that's 6 p.m. in the UK. The update itself, we're going to have to download it. And of course, it is something that we may end up seeing some preloads available for it. So keep your eye out as of tomorrow. Now, the next big thing that you really want to make sure you do if you want to get the full effect out of this update, the big marquee item here for this, is, of course, is going to be raids. We will see a multiplayer map, two operators, new weapons, some stuff with Warzone and DMZ and some balancing and everything that goes along with weaponry and all that kind of stuff as well. But the big thing, of course, that's marketed is raids. This will be coming to Spec Ops. So it's very possible you may not have played Spec Ops all that much since launch. I'm right there with you. I'm going to be doing some last second grinding with it, but with Raid Keys offering you a week of Raid access and replayability to any degree, playing Spec Ops and getting familiar not only with the mechanics and how things work will help out, but also ranking up your Spec Ops kits will end up helping you big time for Raids as well. Spec Ops has three main kits, Assault, Medic, and Recon, each having their own tiers for progression, and at certain tiers you can end up getting additional abilities that can help you out in-game. Now, you can do the Raids without any of these ranked up, yes, but you'll likely find them significantly harder to do if you don't have these ranked up to any specific tier. Tier. Upgrades for these kits are awarded at tier 1, 3, 5, 7, and 10, and each kit offers specific things going as follows. Assault for tier 1, you end up getting the ability to use three plates in your plate carrier instead of two. Armor box is also granted as a field upgrade. The tier 3 upgrade sees you using the assault suit, which once permission, you get full armor plates plus 60% extra health. Then tier 5, you can use grenades and equipment faster, as well as reload and switch weapons faster. A big one here if you're somebody that likes to play more aggressive in your nature. Right now, we don't know any about what the gameplay will require in terms of if running and gunning is going to be your best bet, but that can be something that can be really helpful. At tier 7, your max inventory will increase from 3 extra plates to 5 in terms of that armor, and then at tier 10, the top, you begin missions with 2 stims in your backpack. The medic kit at tier 1 sees you being able to revive teammates twice as fast, with a revive pistol field upgrade usable. At tier 3, you'll begin missions with a self-revive. Tier 5, you'll have access to the bomb drone, which, once per mission, you can seek out and kill enemies with a deadly explosive. At tier 7, you'll have tactical will sprint be active twice as long, allowing you to also move 30% faster while crouched. Again, another really big and beneficial one. At tier 10, you begin missions with claymores in your backpack and with AT mines in your backpack. And finally, recon at tier 1, you end up having the snapshot field upgrade with the ability to throw and highlight nearby enemies every 60 seconds. At tier 3, you can begin missions with a sentry gun and cluster mine kill streaks. Tier 5, you can recharge lethal and tactical equipment every 60 seconds. At tier 7, you can carry one extra lethal and one extra tactical grenade. And tier 10, you can begin begin missions with a heartbeat sensor and spotter scope in your backpack. So again, offering a wide range of what you can do in regards to raids and what's upcoming, and likely being that they are a three-person, 
it might be very beneficial to end up having somebody in your party being one of each of those an assault a medic and a recon so you can end up getting all of those usable at your disposal so again you can do these raids without these bonuses but it just becomes exponentially tougher depending on the class you're using ranking these up requires stars for completion levels of the spec ops missions so take a few hours and grind out a handful of them so that you at least have some of the more basic levels of each kit leveled up again something that i'll be right there with you i'm gonna be grinding that out here as of tonight tomorrow ahead of the season one reloaded update on wednesday now beyond that one other thing that you can look forward to and you should know about is the ability to rank up weapons a bit faster here this upcoming weekend for those of you guys still ranking up your weapons or perhaps even the chimera now as a new weapon with the mid-season update we'll finally be seeing our first double weapon xp event happening this upcoming weekend starting at 10 a.m pacific time on the 15th 1 p.m eastern and 6 p.m in the uk going until the same time on the 19th that being monday you'll end up having the ability to get double xp per weapon playstation users thanks to their partnership with call of duty will also get an additional 24 hours on top of that going live as soon as the update itself goes out for mid-season so plenty of time to take advantage of ranking up your weapons for either attachments or to get that full effect of the camo grind we've already detailed it a few times here on the channel now as the best methods to do so and we've also stressed how important double xp is for your weapons so those methods we discuss will exponentially help with that double xp and by default not having to use any tokens it's a huge benefit so you want to make sure you take advantage of that and again given that we ended up going almost two months without a double weapon XP event, we don't know where the next one will be. So jump on and take advantage of it if you end up having weapons that need ranked up. Now talking about weapons a little further, one nice thing about the mid-season update is that we of course are going to get another weapon, the Chimera Assault Rifle. Now for those of you guys who know how the camos work within Modern Warfare 2, you only need to end up getting 51 guns platinum to end up having the ability to work on those polyatomic and then mastery camos of Orion as well. So that means that right now we've seen as of this update, four additional weapons coming into Modern Warfare 2 in that weapon category, which means if you end up adding four more, you only have to do those 51 weapons total. So you can, as of this mid-season update, entirely skip your launcher category or some combination of, say, launchers, melees, whoever's giving you a particular headache at a time, you can skip that because we have four additional weapons to work with. The Chimera as of mid-season, the M13B, the Victus XMR, and the Bass P. So use that information accordingly, save yourself some hassle, and then of course, when season two comes along, we'll have presumably three to four more weapons that you can end up doing that as well, that you won't have to do any launchers. You won't have to do any melees and maybe even some pistols or something like that. In addition to those that you'd find annoying, you can end up skipping those altogether. And finally, the last thing we'll talk about here is to familiarize yourself with DMZ if you haven't done so already. Right now, it doesn't seem like Warzone will be getting this introduction here, but DMZ is going to be introducing a new area of play, something that very well could be tethered to the Chimera unlock. We haven't had that explicitly stated just yet. It says in the blog post a challenge and a shop bundle here for that, but we also saw that for the M13B. So jumping in and getting a handle on how DMZ works, some of the contracts, some of the challenges, the extraction, all that kind of stuff, having the basics understood and under your belt is absolutely going to be a big help here if you maybe need to go into this to get the Chimera, or again, if you just want to experience that new area that will be introduced as of DMZ, Building 21. So that said, right now as we're waiting for our final confirmation on some details, perhaps for raids, some things that may be a final trailer or something like that, I want to just take some time today and let you know about a few things that you should look forward to this week and also know to take advantage of ahead of the season one reloaded update so that's what we're gonna call it i'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down below what are you guys looking forward to the most out of season one reloaded anything in particular that you think we should know that maybe wasn't in this list whatever the case drop your thoughts below but if you enjoyed the video if you found it at all insightful do me a favor and drop a like on it and if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe to almost a single thing we're getting all things modern warfare 2 warzone 2 and anything cod related for now thanks so much for watching modest espresso i'll see you guys later take care and peace